Welcome back, everyone. Ready for another deep dive? Definitely. Always up for a good deep dive. Today, we're diving into the world of Wiccan. Oh, cool. And let me tell you, this is not your typical hero's journey. Not at all. We're talking about a character who's got this really interesting visual. Yeah. Like, you see him and you're like, wait a minute, is mm -hmm. that Thor? <laughs> right. Is that Scarlet Witch? What's going on here? There's, like, this power. You see Thor, and then there's, like, this grace yes. that you see in Scarlet Witch. Exactly. It's like they got mixed together somehow. Probably. So, who is this guy? So, this is where it gets really interesting. Okay. Wiccan's also known as Billy Kaplan in his human life. Okay. But he's actually the reincarnated son of Wanda Maximoff. Wait, Wanda Maximoff? Yes. The Scarlet Witch. And Vision... Hold on a second. Yeah. Vision the android? Yeah. I don't think babies come from that. Well, right. And that's what's so crazy about this whole thing. Okay. Wanda's powers. She's a chaos magician. Right. So she can warp reality. So you're saying she just magicked up some babies. Pretty much. But it's not that simple. It never is. This is where it's even crazier. Okay. Mephisto, this cosmic parasite demon he's involved. Oh, boy. He claimed that Wanda, when she created her twins unknowingly used fragments of his essence. Wow. So he's like their weird cosmic godfather. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Making them pawns in his games. So it's a family reunion with a side of demonic influence. Exactly. Yeah. And if that wasn't enough... Oh, there's more? Master Pandemonium. Okay. He's also involved. And remind me who Master Pandemonium is again. He's literally made of demons. No, oh, that's right. And he believes that the twins hold fragments of his lost soul. This, this is getting complicated. I know, right? And guess who manipulated everything? Mephisto, I'm assuming? Mephisto, of course. So we've got two incredibly powerful magical beings after these kids. Yeah. What happens next? Well, it all leads to a huge magical showdown. Okay. And in the end, it seemed like the twins were absorbed by Mephisto. Their souls were destroyed. <gasps> wow. But. And you knew there had to be a but. There's always a but. They were reincarnated. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. They come back. To come back. Yeah. So even cosmic demons can't escape reincarnation. Right. It seems like a bit of a loophole. It really does. So we have Billy Kaplan living a normal life, no memories or anything. Right. And suddenly, bam, powers. Of all the lives to be born into why this one? That's the question, isn't it? It is. Some say Wanda's magic shielded their souls somehow. Okay. But why reincarnation? It's a mystery. It's a big mystery. Even Master Pandemonium, when he runs into Billy later. Okay. All he does is give him a cryptic warning. Wait, Master Pandemonium is giving out life advice now. Right. I thought he would be all about that dark past. You'd think so. What is he not saying? Exactly. Mm. It's like he knows the ending to a movie, but he's not telling. That's frustrating. Totally. And imagine poor Billy just trying to figure all this out. Right. Magic is real. Yeah. And I'm related to superheroes. Talk about a reality check. Seriously. So Billy's got these cosmic connections, a mysterious past, and oh yeah, he's got powers. And we're not talking about your average superpower set here. Right, because your average superpower is not, my mom might be a demon witch. No, not quite. Yeah. Wiccan's powers are honestly kind of off the charts. Okay, so hit me with it. What can he do? Teleportation. Okay, useful. Force fields. Standard superhero fair. Energy blasts. Like, massive ones. Okay. Getting more impressive. I'm going to get this. He can control the elements. Wait, what? Yeah. Fire, ice, lightning, okay. you name it, he can control it. Okay. That's just showing off now. That's got to be top tier superhero stuff, right? Definitely A-list material, but there's a catch. There's always a catch, isn't there? What is it this time? To cast a spell, he has to be able to hear himself say it. Hold on. Seriously? Yeah. So he's like, force field, please. Out loud. In the middle of a fight. Pretty much. It's definitely unique. You th Okay, that seems like a liability, if you ask me. It definitely adds a layer of vulnerability. I'd say, sir. Imagine if he gets a cold or something mid-battle. That's true. But I think it actually makes his powers even more interesting. Okay, I'll bite. How so? Well, it suggests that magic for Wiccan isn't just about gestures or willpower. Right. It takes focus. It's deliberate. So it's like his voice is a tool. Like a channel for the magic or something. Yeah, exactly. It's like his words have power, literally. Which, when you think about it, makes sense for someone who might be the demiurge, you know. The demiurge. I almost forgot about that whole prophecy thing. Right. We skimmed over that a bit, but we need to unpack that first. Oh, definitely. Yeah. The demiurge, it's not just some random magical title. It's a pretty big deal. Huge. We're talking about 
the being that possibly created the entire Marvel Universe. Okay, so no pressure, Billy, but no pressure. Right. Talk about a high school resume builder. Seriously. <laughs> so how does someone even begin to process that? Right. Imagine finding out you're not just a superhero, but you're destined to be a cosmic creator god. That's a lot for anyone to handle, let alone someone who probably stresses about prom dates and math tests. It's a wild combination of teenage angst and cosmic significance. It really makes you think about the nature of destiny and free will. And speaking of destiny and free will, we got to talk about Wiccan's love life. Oh, yes. His relationship with Hulkling. That's just another reason why his story is so compelling. Totally. Because we're not just talking about a random superhero fling here. No, this is a love story for the ages. For the ages and across galaxies. Right. So for those who need a refresher, hmm. who is Hulkling, and how did these two even meet? Okay, so picture this. Hulkling. He's a shapeshifter. Shapeshifter, cool. And not just any shapeshifter. He's half Kree, half Skrull. Wait, those are like rival alien races, right? Exactly. Talk yeah. about a complicated family tree. Seriously. So how did he and Wiccan cross paths? They were both on the Young Avengers together. Of course makes sense. Young heroes got to stick together. Exactly. And you know how it is. Teenage hormones flying. Ah, young love. Right. But here's the thing. Their relationship... It just works. What's so special about it? It really is. They balance each other out so well. Yeah. You've got Wiccan who can be a little more serious. Yeah. You know? Makes sense with the whole weight of the universe destiny thing. Exactly. And then Hulkling brings this lightness, this playfulness. They just click. They do. Mm -hmm. And they go through so much together. I mean, we're talking cosmic wars, alternate timeline. Don't forget mind control. Oh, yeah. How could I forget? That, that's like a Tuesday for these two. It's crazy. But through it all, their love survives. More than survives, it thrives. They get married <clears throat> twice. Right. Once on Earth and once as leaders of the Kree Skrull Alliance. Talk about a power couple. It makes you wonder how much of their love is destiny and how much is just them choosing each other. That's the question, isn't it? Does fate have a plan for love or does love have a plan for fate? Deep stuff. But it's something Wiccan definitely grapples with. Oh, absolutely. Hmm. Especially when you think about everything he goes through as a hero. Because it's not all cosmic weddings and intergalactic diplomacy, is it? Not even close. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is still a teenager figuring out his powers. And those powers are nothing to sneeze at. Definitely not. We see him struggle early on, especially during his time with the Young Avengers. Which makes sense. That's like superhero high, right? You're bound to mess up a few times. Exactly. Everyone's figuring out their powers. There's rivalries, friendships. Uh -huh. Don't forget the drama. Oh, there's plenty of drama. But for Wiccan, it's more than just teenage growing pains. Right, because one wrong move and he could accidentally turn someone into a frog. Pretty much. There's actually this one incident that really sticks out. Okay, what happened? They're in a battle. Things are chaotic. And Wiccan loses control for a moment. Uh-oh. Yeah, and he accidentally leaves this whole group of villains in a coma. No way. Seriously. Yeah, it was a huge deal. It really shook him up. I bet. That's got to be a heady burden to carry. It definitely messed with him for a while. He started doubting himself, wondering if he could ever truly control his powers. That's got to be tough, especially when you're also dealing with all the normal teenage insecurities. Right. Like, imagine trying to figure out who you are while also dealing with the fact that you could accidentally erase someone from existence. I'd probably just stay home and read comic books. <laughs> probably a good call. <laughs> but for Wiccan... It's this moment that forces him to confront his vulnerabilities. It's like even with all that power, he's still human. Exactly. Ugh. And that's what makes his story so relatable. We all feel that pressure to live up to our potential right. Absolutely. But for Wiccan, those stakes are just a little bit higher. Just a tad. Okay, so we've talked about his powers, his love life, his struggles. And can't forget about his complicated family. Oh, man. Right. His parents are back, but it's not exactly smooth sailing, is it? No, it's definitely not a Hallmark reunion. Definitely not. Yeah. But it all comes to a head in the Children's Crusade, right? Exactly. This is where everything we've been talking about comes together. So for those who haven't read it, what exactly is the Children's Crusade? Basically, it's this quest that the Young Avengers go on to find Wanda. They want to help her recover from everything she's been through. Yeah. She'd had a mental breakdown, and they thought they could bring her back. So they set out to find the most powerful magic user on the planet. Bold move. They're young and full of hope. What could go wrong? Jameis' last words, right? Sadly, yes. 
Because this is where Doctor Doom decides to make an appearance. Of course, because why not throw another villain into the mix? Right. And it turns out he's been manipulating Wanda this whole time, using her powers for his own evil schemes. So it's a whole big mess. A colossal mess. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of it all, Cassie Lang. Stature. Yes. She's killed. Which is a huge turning point for Wiccan. It is. Because he blames himself. He thinks if he had been stronger, more in control, he could have saved her. Wow. That's a lot of guilt to carry. It is. It really shows the true cost of power. Not just in terms of destruction, but the emotional toll it takes. It makes you wonder, is it even possible to be that powerful and not lose a part of yourself along the way? That's the question, isn't it? And it's something Wiccan will probably be wrestling with for a long time. It seems like even in the Marvel Universe, there are no easy answers. Nope. Just complicated characters and even more complicated situations. And that's why we love it. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of Wiccan, what's the takeaway? What sticks with you? For me, it's the idea that even with extraordinary powers, at the end of the day, it's the choices we make that matter most. Absolutely. Wiccan could easily give in to the fear, the doubt, the pressure of his destiny. But he doesn't. He chooses love. He chooses hope. He chooses to keep fighting for what he believes in. And that's a powerful message for all of us. Even without magical powers, we have the ability to choose our own path. To define our own destiny. Yeah. Well said. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap things up. Time flies when you're having fun. It really does. But before we go, we want to leave you with something to think about. Always. We've talked a lot about alternate realities, different paths not taken. The multiverse and all its possibilities. Exactly. So here's a question for you. What if you could glimpse those alternate versions of yourself? What might you learn? Would you make different choices? Would you even want to know? Now that's a question for another deep dive. It certainly is. And speaking of other deep dives, next time we'll be tackling the Young Avengers. The team that started it all for Wiccan and Hulkling. We'll be exploring their history, their members, and why they're so important to the Marvel Universe. It's going to be epic. Until then, keep exploring those infinite possibilities.